between us over this morning. And uh, I'd like to pray that the Lord uh, helps me through this, uh, this hard times we're going through right now. Uh, and uh, that I don't end up homeless. Uh, I mean, I'm trying, but things just ain't going right for me right now. Just, uh, just asking for the Lord to have mercy on me. I'd like to pray for my family. I got some family members that's lost. And uh, I pray for all you people here. Amen, Lord. Now, guys, there's a few different ways to have got you. You know, you ever watch those movies where they invoke spirits? Yeah, evil spirits or whatever. You got the Ouija board, and they do the seances, all that craziness. Yeah, guess what? There's a way to invoke God's spirit, too. Yeah. yeah, there is. One of those ways is to praise His name. You know what I'm saying? Praise His name out loud, man. Yeah. Another one of those ways is to pray. Yeah. And another one of those ways, man, is to read the Word. You understand what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit will come to you, man, to give you understanding. And by reading the Word and asking God to reveal to you, you're invoking the presence of God. Yes. I call the state, man. There's another way, too. Speak on His name. More than one person around you, speak on His name. Jesus said, we're two or more gathered speaking on my name. There I am in the midst. His presence. You know what I'm saying? All right. Anybody else got a prayer request? I really want to pray for a guy named Mike. I forgot his last name. His heart is 15%. He's just with the paramedics. So he asked me, I was going to pray for him. my prayer. He said, he gets to know Jesus Christ. If he doesn't, anything goes to that. That's a real good time. Sometimes, I know earlier I said about remissive prayers, but sometimes we must make our requests known again. Right. Maybe it's remiss, maybe it's not. You know, Jesus asked for God to remove the cup, his trial, his tribulation from him in the Garden of Gethsemane. You know, he said, but, but not my will be done, but yours. So he made his request known again, but he didn't want to have to go through this. You know what I'm saying? He did. But at the same time, he submitted himself, right? It's okay. Make your request known to God, man. Just know that you must submit yourself to what God wants from you. Yeah? Whatever it is that you're facing, whatever it is that you got to go through, get through it. Yeah? yeah. Anybody else? Yeah? What's up, Todd? Good, I'd like everybody to uh, pray for my father. He's, uh, he's fighting uh, prostate cancer. And uh, don't know uh, how it's going or anything. I haven't, I haven't been out that way. I'm kind of having a hard time myself right now. But uh, I hope he's going to make it through surgery and everything. And thanks, thanks, y'all. That's good. That's good. Don't know what his will is, but we can pray it to be kind. I'm going to pray for my sponsor, uh, his seller. I don't know if you guys heard, but his daughter is going to pay the cost. I'm going to pray for um, I just found out about it this Friday or Saturday yesterday. And uh, he's a good guy. And he prayed for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Strength, peace, and comfort. Anybody else? Yeah. I'm just praying for something personal, and I pray for that Jesus will guide me and do the right thing. Alright. That's perfect. You're part of that being led to do the right thing is finding out. You know what I mean? What you can find out. Every word of it. Every word, every, every decision, every step of your life is not written in the book, man. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to find every single answer. But if you start applying what you do find, what you will find, man, is that those things that aren't written will be in His path, will be in His will. Yeah? Anybody else? Yeah. 
so Lord, these prayer requests in the hearts of man's voice. Father, we come before you, Lord. We've made our requests known to you, Father. We've opened our hearts, pointed out, Lord. You know each and every one of us hearts, those that made requests, Father. And those that wanted a request, Lord, but maybe didn't say it, Father. You know our hearts and minds, Lord. Father, I ask that you touch each and every individual's request, Lord. Those people around them in their lives, those that they've prayed for, those that they themselves, Father, whether they're in sickness, Lord. Or Whatever the case may be, Father, we just pray that you move in their lives, Father. And whether you heal them, Father, or whether you change their circumstances, Lord, or whether you strengthen them, whatever the case is, Lord, we do not pray that you to assert your will, Father, to, to, to change your will, Father. We just pray, Lord, that you would give us the strength and peace and patience to, to endure whatever circumstances you are using to mold us, Father, to mold those around us, Lord. Father, we pray for forgiveness this day, Lord. Uh, as always, Lord, we pray you pour your spirit out. That you put up a mighty hedge of protection around us, Father, to keep out anything that will hinder our reception of you this day, Father, whether it be your word, whether it be your love, whether it be your spirit, Lord. Father, we just pray for the flaming sword to burn away this day, Lord. Father, as always, we praise your holy and mighty name. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Alright, guys. So last week we covered humbling ourselves. It was a promise. It was a promise that I walked around and I had on my heart and man, my lips. You know, and today I stand here, you know, uh, with the evidence, the evidence of this promise that it was fulfilled to me. You understand? Yes. It's not just something I'm saying because I read it. You can clearly see it. You can clearly see it. There was a man out here, homeless, kicking it in the camp, sleeping in a sleeping bag in a tent with nothing, no job, no nothing to have it. Yeah, today I stand before you, you know. These possessions, they're not great. It doesn't matter. It's not about how much I have. It's the fact that I had, yes, and the fact that I'm here, standing here. You see what I'm saying? As proof, as proof that the word is true, as proof that the promise was fulfilled to me, yes. And furthermore, it should be proof to you that God will fulfill the word to you as well. If you claim it, man. If you claim it. Yes? All right. Desire the sincere milk of the word. Yes? Remember, we said that. Sincere. You must be sincere. You can't half step. Yes? And today we're going to learn about that. A little more about half step in my story, man. This story of repentance. You know, uh, the word repent itself means to change. You know what I'm saying? Yes, it means to change. Uh, and when John the Baptist, when he came, he John the Baptist came before Christ, and he came preparing the way for Christ. You understand what I'm saying? Christ, the King of Kings, was coming, but John the Baptist prepared the people for the coming of Christ. He prepared the people to receive Christ. Yes, he spoke to the people some of the things that Christ was going to speak to them to prepare their minds so that they would know Christ when Christ came. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, because Christ would come speaking some of the same things that John did, right? And this allowed the people to know that this was the man whom John spoke of, even though they had never met Christ. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. And so the thing that John preached from Matthew 3, 1 through 8, says, In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For well, this was he that was spoken of by the prophet, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, making his path straight. And the same John had raiment of camel's hair and leather girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism and said unto them, O oh, generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth, therefore, fruits, meat, for repentance. All the people were coming to John. John was preaching forgiveness. You understand what I'm saying? Forgiveness of their sin. You got to realize that Time, these people, the only way that they, they thought they could be forgiven of their sin was by sacrificing animals at the temple. You understand? They had to go to the priest. They had to buy their animal from the priest because the priests were crooked. You understand? They, they just couldn't bring an animal anymore like God 
set it forth to be. No, they had to buy an animal from the priest. Yes, all right. And have it sacrificed by the priest. And, you know, the priest got so greedy that it got to where only the rich people could afford to come and sacrifice an animal. Yeah. And so the poor people who couldn't get forgiveness, man. You see what I'm saying? They, they couldn't be forgiven because they couldn't afford to have an animal sacrificed. And so John came preaching forgiveness through baptism. Yes, by the washing of the water, man. Yeah, all right. And that this repentance is what led to the forgiveness. It wasn't so much the baptism, you understand? It was the repentance that brought forth the forgiveness. The changing of the way, yes? And this, this is where Christ came. Matthew 4, 17 now. This was after he went and got baptized by John. Went out in the wilderness for a little while. And during his temptation, for those of you that might know the story, 40 days without food or water in the desert. Yes, 40 days and nights. And the first thing that Christ came preaching after he came out in the desert was this. From that time, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Notice how Christ's message and John's message was the same. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yes, Christ went and worked his ministry. He healed lots of people. And he continued telling people that they must repent. Every parable was about repentance. A changing of the way. From doing one thing to doing another thing. You understand? Yes. Because people were seeking eternal life. This is what was promised to the Hebrew people, this eternal life. But the only way to receive it was for them to change from where they were to the way God said they needed to be. Man, yes. And after Christ died and the disciples went out, the disciples went out, taking this message on out after Christ, yes, the same as we are here today, 2,000 years later, saying the same thing. Acts 2.38. Then Peter said it to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remissions of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I saw something about this repentance, guys. You understand? And I'll be honest with you. You know, I attempted to, to have God, to serve God, to know about God. You understand? Uh, many times. Many times, man. And it was like each time I tried it, I got a little closer, yeah, and a little closer, a little closer. As each new problem that came up in my life squeezed me tighter and tighter, harder and harder, more tears after more tears, more pain after more pain, more people that I hurt, man, I got a little closer, a little closer, you understand? But there was still one thing that I lacked. There was one thing that I lacked, man, and it was repentance. It was repentance. I got out of prison in May 2012. And you know, in the penitentiary is when I asked God for forgiveness. When I asked Jesus to forgive me of my sin. I asked Jesus into my life in 2002. March of 2002, sitting in the jail cell. Yeah, I'd asked Jesus into my life, man, into my heart, like somebody told me that I needed to do. You know, yeah, that's what they said. And so that's what I did. With tears in my eyes, I asked Jesus in my heart. But I didn't change. You know, I didn't change. Nothing really changed for me, man. And in May 2012, when I got out of the penitentiary, 10 years later, yeah, I was a little closer, man. I was a little closer. I knew a lot more of the Word as I had read it for many more years. I've been reading this book since I was 21. I'm 41 now, yeah, all right. And I was a little closer, but there was still one thing that I lacked, even though I had so much more knowledge there was still something that I lacked. I had yet to repent. I had yet to change. No. What I did, I was going to be a scholar. I was going to take the Word of God and make it mean what I wanted it to mean. So that I could continue doing what I wanted to do. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine somebody taking a stick and their arms full of needles saying that God was okay with it? Because there was no commandment against me. Huh? Can you imagine that? Yes. And that's what I was. That's what I did. Because there was something within me. There was a pride within me, man, that refused to change. Refused. Though I knew I had to. I knew that I needed to. I knew that I was never going to become anything until I did. Yes, I refused. And I had an overdose. I had an overdose a few years after that. It was 2013. Yes, 2013. After getting out of prison, meeting my wife, getting married, start working with another man in the ministry that man put me up in front of a group of people like you yeah 
sharing my story, you know, sharing the word of God even. I fell back into music drugs. It was what it was, man. Wow. Because I had an opinion. I hadn't asked God to deliver me of that substance. I'd only asked for deliverance of my sin, of my shame. All that pain that I carried around for all the things that I had done against the people. And I had an overdose. I want to read this to you. This is Luke 13, 1 through 9. I'm going to break this down into two parts because it's, it needs to be. There were present at that season. This is Jesus talking. There were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans, because they suffered such things. I tell you, they, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Or those eighteen upon whom the tower in Siloam fell and slew them, Think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. There were two kinds of people that Christ just described right there. The first group, the Galileans, they were slain. They had broken the law, they were criminals. You understand? And they were slain for this. And their blood was mingled with the Roman sacrifices as a result. You know what I'm saying? The Romans were terrible people, man. You know, this was how they ruled the nations around them that they that, that, that they conquered and occupied, man. They did terrible, horrendous things to the people. I mean, anybody know what they did to the Christians? They used them for street lamps. Yeah, they hung them up on poles up and down the streets and set them up on fire. You understand what I'm saying? The Romans were terrible people. Yep, yeah. all right. So these kinds of people were people who were caught, they were criminals, yes, and they were killed and sacrificed for this, man. But the second group of people, the people who the Tower of Siloam fell upon, this just happened all of a sudden, like, you understand? They were just a group of people walking down the street, the tower fell over on them, killed about 13, 14 of them. You know? Yeah. Now Jesus is showing us that there's two kinds of people here. There are two kinds of people here. There are people here who are going to be punished <laughs> knowingly, like all of us that have been to jail, we've been punished knowingly for this. Yeah, all right. And then there's going to be people who's going to be punished all of a sudden, like, you understand? With no warning whatsoever. It's just something bad going to happen to you. And you're not even going to know why. Yeah, like when Christ returns. Yeah, when Christ returns with eyes like flames of fire, wearing a robe drenched in blood, wielding a sharp two-edged sword, slaying the nations, bringing recompense to those people who refuse to repent. Yes. And he's telling us that unless we repent, we shall die in like manner as these people that he described. Yes. All right. Well, I had an overdose, and I lay without breath nearly 40 minutes. I don't want to say 40 minutes. My wife says 40 minutes, but I don't know. 40 minutes seems like a long time for me to be standing here before you. No damage to my brain, you know, no damage to my body to have full faculty. But then again, you know, God does miraculous things. Yes, yes. And then the, in this overdose that I had, man, I was in I was in the darkness. You know, you gotta remember I have one foot in Christ and I have one foot in the world. I knew Christ, I knew the word, I knew the truth, but I was holding the truth in unrighteousness because I refused to repent. I was making a mockery of the sacrifice of my king, man. You understand what I'm saying? The blood that was spilled for me, I was making a mockery of it by going and saying one thing and doing another. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. All right. This was my punishment. Anyway, in my overdose, I didn't see no blinding light. I didn't hear no... Real, I mean, it wasn't like some far-fetched psychedelic experience or whatever, man. It was just darkness. Except for one little pin of light. You ever been out in a really dark field, away from the city where there's no lights or whatever, and look up into the night sky and you only see one star? One little tiny star? Yeah, that's the way it was for me, man. And for some reason, that little speck of light that I saw, I knew what it was. And I, I knew that this is where I've been trying to get to my whole life. My whole life has been about this one little speck of light, man. Yeah? All right. And I took off after you. I don't know. You know, they say a day with God is like a thousand years. Forty, so, I mean, if you take that in proportion, 40 minutes, that's somewhere around three years. 
in the darkness that I spent, I don't know how many of that time I spent running before I realized that I was not getting any closer. Yeah? That I was not going to make it, man. And then all of a sudden I heard somebody crying. I don't know, it could have been my wife. I'm sure she was crying or whatever. But uh, I heard somebody crying. And then I came to, and as I came to, I heard a song, a song that I hadn't heard since I was in high school, and it was called Israel Son by Silver Chair. And at any rate, there were some lyrics in there that God was speaking to me. But, you know, it was, th in this darkness, first off, where Christ says we're going to go, yeah, the unprofitable servant, you understand? The one who is unprofitable for the sake of the kingdom is going to be cast into outer darkness. There was much wailing and gnashing of teeth. And I'll be honest with you, in that darkness I understand why there's going to be wailing and gnashing of teeth. I really do. Because we come to understand the reason we're in that darkness is because of what we do. It's not because of what God done, but what we do. What we should have done and didn't do. Yeah? And the anger that comes from the wailing and the grinding of your teeth is at yourself. And I'll be honest with you, that's a terrible feeling. That's a terrible feeling. I wish you had another chance. I'm just saying, you haven't heard that it's a glorious thing to get another chance. But look here, I want to finish this. He said, he spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and find none. Cut it down, why cumbereth it the ground? And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year, until I shall dig about it and fertilize it. And if it bear fruit, well. But if not, then after that shalt thou cut it down. I come to understand that that crying that I heard was Christ at the feet of God, crying for me, telling God these words. You understand? This very, these very words, to give me another chance to allow Christ to work with me just a little more, just a little while longer, man. Yeah, that was exactly what it was. I didn't know that it didn't come to me until much later, man, after having read those words. And you know, when God talks to you, when God speaks to you, you just know. You understand? It's not something that you gotta sit and wonder about, you just know. Yeah, you, you just know. You know, you ever had those things that you just know? Okay, you can't explain it to anybody else, really, to, to, so that they will know. It's just something you know. That's a feeling that you have inside of you that no one can change. Yes? All right. This is exactly what it is, guys. And I'm telling you, each and every one of you sitting here today, that this is the chance that you have today, man. Each and every one of you sitting here, this is the chance that you have today. Because I'll be honest with you. You might not get to go to the darkness and come back. You understand? You might not get to go to the darkness and come back and get the second chance that I got, man. You know? And to be, to be furthermore, to be quite honest with you, I never had a man like me standing before myself at some point in my past saying these kinds of things to me, revealing this understanding to me. You know what I mean? I'll be honest with you. The more that I tell you, the more that I share with you, the more truth that I give to you, the more you're going to be held accountable for it. You understand? The day that we stand before God, none of us are going to have excuse. None of us are going to be able to make excuse to God. Now, I mean, you know, down here we're full of excuses why we didn't do so. Or how it was always somebody else's fault. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. But when we stand before Him, there's going to be no excuse. Yeah. And one of the things that He's going to say to you, do you remember? I sent my servant, Russell, to tell you. Yeah. And it's going to come back to you in that moment. And there's going to be no excuse. And this is going to be the moment that you start hating yourself. You understand? As two angels are dragging you away into the darkness. Yes? Yes. I think I'm just saying, man. I don't know. I mean, you know, <laughs> Paul says we went some by fear and some by compassion. Well, the compassion came through this morning with the food, man. And it's now it's time for the fear. I'm just saying. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of all understanding. And if you're going to repent... It must be because you're afraid of what God's going to do to you. You understand? There's no other reason to repent. What other reason do I have to change who I am lest I'm afraid of the punishment, man, that's going to come upon me? Yes? Because that's what it took for me. I had no apathy. Do you understand? Everybody know what apathy is? Apathy is fear. I had no fear of God. I mean, think about it. I'm preaching the Word of God, shooting drugs. I was not afraid of what God might do to me. 
You see what I'm saying? Yes. And God took my breath from me, man, and put me in the outer darkness to show me what I was worthy of, to show me where I was going to end up if I didn't start doing what He had for me to do. And what I'm telling you, what I'm telling you is that the thing that I'm standing here today doing is the very thing that each and every one of you need to be doing. I'm not special. I'm not special. I might have a little boldness. I might have a little courage to stand before you today and to say these things. But I'm not special, guys. Do you understand? Each and every one of you, man, is being called. Each and every one of you have people around you. And each and every one of you are going to have people sent to you. And if you don't share the truth with them the way that I'm sharing the truth with you today, you're going to be held accountable. You're going to be held accountable for what you're not doing. Not just what you're doing, but what you're not doing. Think of this. Think of this. Repentance. Let's have an understanding of what repentance is. True repentance. Yes. Not just getting down on your knees and asking God for forgiveness. That's not repentance. I thought that was what repentance was. Yes. Yes, I did that. You understand? Yeah, I did that. I got down on my knees. I asked God to forgive me, man. He removed that shame and blame from me. And I thought that I was forgiven. I thought that I was delivered, man. I'm a new creation. All these things that I had heard from everybody else, some of the things that I had even read, I thought that this was it. But there was no repentance. Huh? This was the reason why my life continued in shambles. It was just an illusion. All right. It comes out of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 through 32. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their minds, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. You know, people refuse to see. Right? It's not because they're too stupid to understand. It's simply because they refuse to see. You know, ignorance is not a result of stupidity. Do you understand that? Ignorance is a result of ignoring the truth. That's the reason why we're ignorant. It's because we ignored the truth. It's not because we can't understand the truth. No, it's not it at all. It's because we have ignored the truth. Yes. Who being past feeling giving themselves over to lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. That's what we did. That's what we did, man. Especially those of us sitting here on dope. That's what we did. One hit was not enough. We got greedier and greedier and had to have more and more and more. And we started doing more and more things in order to get it. I mean, think about it. First, you start, you, you take money out of your paycheck to buy it. You understand? Yeah, somebody turned you on to it, it was all right, man. You had a little money, you bought some more. Next thing you know, you ain't got a job no more. You start doing worse and worse and worse things to get your substances. The shit is. You understand? Yes. All right. The cleanness. Sin. Think of all the sin that we committed, huh? All the lies that you had to tell in order to get money from people. Um, I'm just saying, man. Yeah, all right. All the theft. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but man, hey, Walmart was not safe. I, hey, I'm from a little town. I'm from a little town. And I'll be honest with you, I had a routine for a long time. I get up, I start on one side of the county and go all the way to the other side of the county hitting every single store in between. Chocolate. And I'd go straight to the pawn shop. I'd sell it. I'd get my stuff. I'd go back and do it again. Twice a day. I'm just saying. The seriousness. Uncleanness. Greediness. 140 was not enough. No. I had to have as many as I could possibly get. No matter who I had to hurt to get it. Who I had to love. Or what I had, what shame I had to endure. Ridiculous. But ye have not so learned in Christ. That's not what Christ is teaching us. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning your former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. Remember last week I told you you've got to clean your speech up. 
You've got to clean your speech up and God will make you his spokesperson. Yes. It's part of repentance, man. Yeah. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. You know what that is? To be renewed in the spirit of your mind. you got to change the way you think. You're never going to change what you're doing until you change the way you think. Do you understand? When you think something is wrong, then you don't do that thing, do you? No. If you think something's okay, then you do that thing. You've got to change the way you think. If you change the way you think, you'll change the way you feel. And if you change the way you feel, your behavior will change. Renewing your mind. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. True holiness. You know, that was what I lacked. That was what I lacked. I was not sincere. I was not in it to win it. I didn't have both feet in it. I still wanted to hold on to some of these things that I wanted to do. It was not true. True holiness is keeping everything God says. Not just some things. Not just those easy things, man, huh? But everything that God says. Wherefore, put away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Yeah, it goes back to our New Year's resolution, don't it, sister? Huh? I will have a love for the truth. I will tell no more lies and have a love for the truth. Because we can't get to God unless it be by the truth. Jesus Christ is the truth. Jesus says, no man coming to the Father except through me. We're not going to get to love except through the truth. Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Here we go. Pay attention. Let him that stole steal no more. But rather let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. That's repentance. You know, repentance isn't just stopping what you're doing. You know? I mean, it was seen that, right? I mean, there's a lot of things that we do that we know we need to stop. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. If we're lying, we know we need to stop. If we're stealing, we know we need to stop. But it's not enough. It's not enough just to stop. What did he say here? What did he say? Let him that stole steal no more. Okay? There's the stopping, isn't it? But listen. But rather, let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good, that he may have to give, give to him that needed. First we were stealing. Then we stopped stealing. Now we're giving. You see that? You see how giving is the opposite of stealing? It's not just stopping what you're doing, but doing its opposite. If you only stop what you're doing, what reward have you? What reward have you for just not stealing? There's no reward in that. That's what you're not, you're not supposed to be stealing. No, the reward comes in the giving. Not just to not stealing, not just stopping what you're doing that's wrong. You're not supposed to be doing wrong anyway. That's not it at all. No, the reward comes when you do the opposite of what's wrong. Man. Yes? You're stealing. Then you need to be giving. Think about all the things. All the things that you know is wrong. All the things that you know God is telling you not to do that you have done. And what you need to do for your repentance is to begin doing the opposite. You know, that's one of the things I like about the program up here. Truthfully. That's what they got you doing. You might not see it that way or even know it, but that is what they got you doing. You come up here and you start off level one, just coming in, right? Who are your mentors? Those guys that's ahead of you in the program. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah? Now those guys that are ahead of you in the program are now doing the opposite of what it was they were doing before they started the program. Do you see what I'm saying? Instead of leading people astray, setting people up, man, to get high with them, yeah, now they're in there trying to show people how to be sober. The opposite. Yes. Yes. And it's not something that you only do in the program. It's something that you keep doing. You continue doing for the rest of your life. The rest of your life, guys. There's always going to be people out there falling victim to this. Always. I'm always going to be doing this, man. 
It's just, it's the nature of it. It's the nature of it. And I don't do it to seek reward. I do it because I care. I do it because I love. Knowing all the suffering that you've endured, all the suffering that you've endured, maybe some of you have not endured as much, but every single person here has endured some semblance of suffering, man. Yeah? Maybe some of you got lucky and you're here hearing these things now before it gets too bad. Yeah? But you're going to be able to save somebody from suffering, man. There's somebody out there that's been waiting their whole entire lives to hear these kinds of words out of your mouths. Believe that. Believe that. There's somebody out there for everybody, guys. God has a person out there for you. Because none of us are going to have excuse on the day we're standing before Him. And we're not going to be able to say, God, there was nobody out there for me to help. No. No, no, no. He's not going to let you get off like that. There's somebody out there. There's people that's going to cross your path. And you're going to have the opportunity. The question is, are you going to do it? Are you going to do it? Let's hear it. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind of one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Got to clean that mouth up, guys. Why do you got to clean that mouth up? What did Jesus say? Jesus said, it's not what goes into a man's mouth that devours him. It's what comes out. Why? Because what comes out of your mouth proceeded from the heart. And if that speech is idle, if that speech is corrupt, if all you're doing is sitting around talking about some old crazy, silly, stupid stuff, that's what's in your heart. You got a rotten, dirty, black, corrupt, evil heart. But if you talk, if you speak for the edification, for the understanding of other people around you, what's that say about your heart? It says that you love. It says that you care. That you have a good heart. Like Jesus says, I have a good heart. A good heart will bring forth an abundance of fruit. But out of an evil heart, huh? out of an evil heart, will bring forth rottenness. A good tree bringeth forth good fruit. A rotten tree bringeth forth corrupt fruit. And a good tree cannot bear corrupt fruit. And a corrupt tree cannot bear good fruit. You understand? Yes. Got to clean that mouth up, guys. Got to clean it up, man. James says that out of, your, out of a mouth, blessings and curses both proceed. He said the tongue was a, a wild member, a hard member to tame. Yes. But it can be tamed. He didn't say it wasn't possible. He said that it was out of the same mouth, blessings and curses proceeded. You're going to have to decide what kind of person that you are. You understand? You're going to have to make your mind up what kind of person that you are, man. And allow your mouth to be a reflection of what lives in your heart. Repentance. Repentance, guys. Listen here. It's 1 John 5, 1-13. This then is the message which we have heard of Him and declare unto you that God is light. And in Him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Christ Jesus, His Son, cleanseth us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is flexible and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make Him a liar and His Word is not in us. Think about that. If we confess our sins, He is good to forgive us. Remember last week I told you, I showed you how when you're sitting around in group and you're talking about your stories, and you're talking about the things that you've done, yeah? And you're sharing this with other people around you. 
This is you taking responsibility for what you've done. This is you telling other people and accepting their perspective or their outlook of you. Yes? Accepting the shame, perhaps, for the things that you have done. This is your confession. This is what a confession does. Yes? And I told you that you must take it to the next level. That you must ask for forgiveness, man. It's not enough. It's not enough to just confess it. We must ask for forgiveness also. It said that in God was light and in him was no darkness at all and that we could not walk in darkness and be in the light you can't be in light and darkness at the same time you understand you're either in one or the other earlier i said i had one foot in christ and one foot in the world you understand yes and that's not going to get me anywhere that's not going to get me anywhere you have got to have both feet planted firmly in christ why because in him is no darkness None, none whatsoever, man. Yes, you must invite the light within you, and in this light there is no darkness, so that no darkness will reside within you, guys. I'm just saying, man. I know it's not easy. It's a whole new life. I get it. I truly do. I, I truly do. But if you desire, if your if, if your desires are true, the joy that will come. The joy that will come from when, when you get down and you truly ask God in your life. And I don't care where you do it at, man. I don't care who you do it in front of. I don't care if you do it in the closet. I don't care if you do it in front of a group of people. I don't care how you do it. But if you do it in truth, you're like a saint. The joy that comes upon you. The relief. This will drive you to be truth. Boom. Man, that's the same desire, man. You ever hear around those folks that say uh, they're, no, they're not sinners anymore? You ever heard them? You ever heard that? People go to church and say they're not sinners no more? I just want to point this out to you that they're liars. Yeah. Now, my word. Now, my word. They're, 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 if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Yeah? All right. All right, man. We always going to be sinners, guys. You understand? You might get a grip. Look here. I've got a pretty good grip on my outward sin, perhaps. Yeah? Yeah. I'm not out here stealing. I'm not ripping and robbing anymore, man. I'm not telling lies. But do you think within myself that I might still sin? Yes, of course. I have feelings. And sometimes people hurt my feelings, man. Yes. And sometimes I, I, I imagine wickedness in my mind, man. Huh? Sometimes I see myself punching people in the face. I'm just saying. I'm keeping it 100, man. Yeah. All right. Yeah. This is abomination unto God. Yeah. A heart that devises wickedness is an abomination unto God. It's one of the seven deadly sins, in fact. Yes. Okay, man. It's a never-ending process, guys. It's a never-ending process. Remember that. Don't get all self-righteous, man, because you choose to call on the Lord and God says that He's going to come to you and perfect you. All right? Remain humble. Why? We learned this last week. Because He gives grace to the humble. Grace to the humble. You've got to remain humble, man. All right? Look here. You know, sometimes in the midst of all this, because it's a process. I, I know, man. It's a process. It don't happen overnight. And you know, we're ready for it to happen overnight. Oh man, you might get full, boy. You might get full of joy. You might get full of fire. And just can't wait. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And if you're like me, have absolutely zero patience, huh? Yeah. That impatience will eat you alive. Man. Yeah. All right. You want everything that God promised to you and you want it now. Why? Because you know the truth. You know you, you're true. And your heart is truth. But it's a process. And you know, it's not just for your sake. Like I told you last week, guys. What's happening in your life and what's happening in your heart and the time that it takes for it to happen is not just for your sake. But for those around you. How many people have seen the low life that you may have been? The drug addict that you may have been? The thief that you may have been? The lazy, sorry, good-for-nothing person you may have been. How many people have seen that? How many people have said, you'll never change? Yes, that's right. So it's a process that takes time. 
Because God is using you to show these people something. What is He using you to show them? His power. His Word. His truth. His Spirit. This is the reason why you've got to open your mouth and tell them. This is the reason. But this is a promise to you, man. When you're, as you're doing this and you're waiting and it doesn't seem like nothing's happening to you. Yes? Listen. 2 Peter 3, 8 through 9. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. And a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise as some did count slackness, but is long-suffering to us not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He's using you to bring other people to repentance, guys. And it's not going to happen overnight. I want you to think about how long it's taken for you to have this mindset that you have right now. Whether it's, whether it's 100 or not. Maybe it's only 50%. I don't know. I'm not the judge of such things. But I'm just saying, think of how long it's taken you to have this mindset. Yes. That's right. It's going to be a process. And it's not going to get all better overnight. You're, you're still going to have to go through it. You ain't got through it yet. you just now standing up to it. You're just now standing up to it. You're going to have to get through it. And people are going to have to see that. And then, and then, those people whom you've wronged, those people whom has lost faith in you, huh? it's going to take lots of time seeing you do the right thing before they'll trust you again. It took several years for my wife to believe in me again. Several years. She still ain't 100 as far as that goes. I mean, you know, I don't know if she will ever be 100 in that respect, but yeah, it's taken a long, long time. And as impatient as I am, I have to keep telling myself, it's all my fault. I'm the one that did these things. And I can't hold it against them. But you know, the, the more consistency that she sees in me and out of me, the more she praises God. <laughs> Think about that. The more she's praising God, man, because she knows, she knows that it's only by the grace of God it's only because of the love of God. But more than that, my love for God. And when people see your love for God, when they hear your love for God, and then they see your love for God, they will start loving God. i got a lot of people around me since I've kicked it in the world. Lots of people that I've met along the way that has met me at different stages in my life. Met me at different times in my life. Yes. And those people that met me from the beginning who got to witness some of my uh, some of my wrong, I guess. Some of my wrong, man. Yeah. Here I stand today before you. And you know, those people who got to witness that and experience that, who thought those very same things about me, are now seeking God. Why? Because they saw me and how I was. And they saw what I've done. And they themselves see that it is possible. It is possible. This is how God is using you. Whether you understand it, whether you believe that, but this is how God is using you. Yes. This is how He's using you. You've got to open your mouth. you got to let it out. Man, you got to tell other people, don't be afraid to confess. Don't be afraid to make mistakes after you confess. Don't be afraid of what people will call you because you confess Jesus Christ because you said, I'm going to try to do what Jesus wants me to do. I'm going to try to go to church. I'm going to try to read the Bible. I know this is what I need to do. Don't be afraid. Don't let your fear keep your mouth clamped shut. It's time to open it, man. It's time to do it. You know what? I'll be honest with you. If, if it, if it hadn't been for all the running of my mouth of the Word of God to people around me, huh? and those people saying, hey, you said this, and yet you're doing that. That accountability, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that accountability. Knowing what they were thinking of me because of this. Yeah, think about that. I don't know, man.
It was just one of the things. It was just one of the things that helped me. That helped me stay going. That helps me stay going. I'm not there yet. I'm not close. I don't know how far off I am. None of us will. It's all right. God does. God does, man. Yeah. All right, guys. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Confess. None of us are without sin. It's not that big of a confession. <laughs> it's not a huge confession, man. You understand? None of us are without sin. It's not like you're confessing something that's putting you to shame that's different from everybody else. We're all sitting here not without sin. So don't you admit that you are a sinner and that you need salvation. It's not some uh, new thing. It's not something that other people don't understand. Humble yourselves. Repent. Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I want to go back to the beginning of this message. I want to go back to the beginning of this message. And I told you that you were going to have to open your mouths to those people around you. Didn't I? Why? Because just like John prepared the way for the coming of Christ. You understand? You will become like John. Preparing the way for the coming of our King. You do know He's coming back, right? Yeah. You do understand that He's on His way as we sit here. There needs to be people like us telling other people, Repent! For the kingdom of heaven is at hand! Out here in this wilderness, man. Just like I stand today in this wilderness telling you that you must repent that without repentance there could be no salvation. Amen. Yes? Alright. You know, John said, or Jesus, he said of John, among prophets, there was none greater than John the Baptist. That's what he said. John the Baptist never worked the first miracle. Not one single miracle that John ever worked. But all the prophets before him worked some kind of miracle. They were able to do some type of miraculous thing. And Jesus said among prophets, there were none greater than John. And I'm telling you today that you need to be like John. It's exactly right. That you need to prepare the way for the second coming of our King. You know, I, I know you, you. I know this is really far ahead. These things that I'm telling you, I get it. If you have not yet seen this, I get it. I get it. But I need to prepare you, man. This is the reason why you've endured what you've endured in your life. This is the reason why you have gone through it. To have your eyes open to this, this thing today. It's been this terrible suffering. It's been this curse. It's been this addiction that has caused you to turn to a higher power. To Jesus Christ. To God. Do you understand? Think about it. Yeah? Can you see that? Can you see God's plan in your life? Man? Can you see why He put a fool like me to stand before you and tell you these things? Yes. These guys are telling you. Hey, the times that's coming upon our world is unlike it's ever been. Huh? <laughs> you know, they call us weak. Drug addicts. Yeah. Homeless people. You know, they call us weak. And I'm here to tell you that's not true. Man. That is not true. It takes a lot of intestinal fortitude to force you, yourselves to do some of the things that you've done that is totally against your nature. It is not natural for man to want and desire to do some of the things that we have done. It's not man's nature to be evil. It's man's nature to be good. The spirit that wrestles within you, the spirit, the breath that you have is of God. And God is good. You understand? Yes. It's against your nature. And it takes some kind of strong will don't force yourself to do something that's against your nature. But it also took that to open your eyes. Man. I'm telling you guys, you soldiers, warriors, every one of you, that the days are coming. The days are soon coming, man. And it's going to be up to guys like you. Huh? As you go back out into the world, as you live, I don't know how long it's going to be. Maybe you'll get tan, maybe you won't. I don't know. It don't matter. The Holy Spirit will be with us. 
But it's going to be up to guys like you, man, to lead those people around you to the face of our king. So that when he splits the sky, there will be no fear, you know? But there will be rejoicing. There will be rejoicing. Without us. Without us. It doesn't happen. Without us, nothing happens. You understand what I'm saying? Society is growing harder and harder, farther and farther against this message that I'm telling you today. Without a doubt. I'm sure you can see that. Yeah. All right. Be there, man. Be there. But first, humble yourself so that God's in it. Repent, man. Put so silly stuff away from you. Be the man that God created you to be. Be his sons. Be his sons. Be that son that he's proud of. God is always going to love you guys. But it's also going to be because of his love for us that he has to judge us. Or that he has to separate us. And the separation is simply going to be those of us who love him from those of us who don't. It's that simple. And it's not fair for those of us who love him to spend eternity in the presence of those who don't. It's not fair. He's going to judge. <laughs> Get that in today, man. Yeah? Get that in today. All right. All right, guys. I'm finished. Thank you for putting up with me. Sorry I wasn't as lively today, but pretty sick. Yeah? All right. Let's close the prayer. <clears throat> Lord, we thank you for giving us this word today, Father. Lord, I... I pray that you give us the strength to follow and the courage to repent, Lord, to, to desire this change in our life, to follow, to not just stop what we're doing, Lord, but to begin doing its opposite, Lord. And more than this, Father, I pray that as time goes by, you show us how to share with other people, follow the change that we have endured, the steps of our change, Lord, uh, and to show other people, Father, how, how to get on this path to recovery, Father, to repentance, Lord, to salvation, Lord, that when we stand before you, Father, we might look around and see at least a few, Lord, at least a few, Father. And just as a chain continues to go back farther and farther and farther, Lord, just to see very many, Father. Lord, uh, because we know the Word tells us that He who brings a sinner to repentance covers a multitude of sin. Lord, Lord uh, that there is much rejoicing in this kingdom of heaven on the same that just one soul in front. Help us, Lord. Lift us, teach us, and strengthen us to be that person that brings at least one to repentance, Lord. <clears throat> Father, we ask these blessings in the name of our King Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Lord is the everlasting God. Oh,